Osteoarthritis is a common cause of knee disability and the primary reason for knee replacement surgery. Osteoarthritis is a byproduct of age-related wear and tear. This can result in pain, stiffness, deformity, and instability. The knee is a complex hinge joint that allows you to bend or straighten your leg. The knee joint is comprised of the bottom end of the femur and the top end of the tibia. When you move your lower leg, your femoral condyles glide over the tibial plateau, aided by a cushioning layer of cartilage. In a healthy knee joint, this motion is smooth and painless. In an osteoarthritic knee, the cartilage within the joint softens and wears away. This causes the knee joint to become rough and irregular and prevents smooth and painless motion within the joint. Other reasons for knee replacement surgery include wear and tear arthritis, damage following an injury such as fractures and meniscus or ligament tears, inflammatory arthritis, avascular necrosis, deformity such as an excess bowed or knock knees, and obesity. Assessment of the patient is critical to determining whether knee replacement surgery is the ideal treatment option. Areas for assessment include the patient's general health, physical examination such as alignment, stability, and range of motion, the patient's social status, as well as x-rays. The x-ray on the left shows an anatomically healthy knee. The x-ray on the right shows a diseased knee joint with a lack of joint space and bone-on-bone -bone articulation. Surgery is not always the best method of treatment for knee disease. Potential non-surgical treatments include lifestyle and activity modification, physical therapy, bracing, assistive devices such as a cane or walker, the use of analgesic medications, or injections. The surgical treatments may include arthroscopy, osteotomy, partial knee replacement, and total knee replacement. Knee replacement surgery involves an orthopedic surgeon replacing your diseased knee joint with an artificial prosthesis. The ends of the femur and tibia are cut to eliminate roughness. The ends of these bones are covered with a metal surface separated by a plastic liner in order to create a new joint. While there is no absolute indication on whether surgical treatment is required, knee pain is the primary indicator. Another strong indicator is whether knee disability affects the patient's quality of life. In order to be indicated for knee replacement surgery, the patient must understand the risks of surgery and anesthesia relative to their benefits, be willing to accept those risks, and not have any predicated contraindications to surgery. Other less common reasons for knee replacement surgery include deformity, stiffness, and instability. The patient journey includes nine steps. It begins with the orthopedic consult, assessment in the new joint program, placement on the surgical wait list, then optimization of consults and laboratory tests, assignment of a surgical date, placement to an education class, finalization of preoperative testing, then the hospital stay in surgery, followed by postoperative physical therapy and recovery. The prosthetic used to replace your knee consists of multiple parts. These include a femoral prosthetic, a tibial prosthetic, which is separated by a plastic liner, as well as a patellar button, which is fixed to the back of the kneecap. Your surgeon may recommend either partial knee replacement or total knee replacement. Which treatment is appropriate depends on the location of degenerative change, as well as other patient factors. Total knee arthroplasty, or replacement, is a surgical procedure in which a diseased or damaged knee joint is replaced with an artificial joint. Your knee is made up of the lower end of your thigh bone, or femur, the upper end of the shin bone, or tibia, and the kneecap, or patella. Most replacement joints consist of a metal femoral component, a plastic tibial component held in a metal tray, and a plastic patellar component. The procedure begins with an incision on the front of the knee and the kneecap is moved to the side. Damaged bone and cartilage at the end of the femur are cut away and the bone is measured and cut to fit into the femoral component, which is then attached. Next, damaged bone and cartilage at the top of the tibia are cut away and the bone is measured and cut to fit into the tibial component. A metal tray is fit against the flat cut top of the bone with its stem inserted into the bone. 
a plastic insert is snapped into the tibial tray. The femoral component slides on it when the knee is bent. The damaged portion of the kneecap may be replaced by a mushroom-shaped prosthesis. The resectioned patella and prosthesis are attached to other components. Measurements and tests to ensure balance and movement are done during and after surgery. Knee replacement can significantly reduce pain and improve function. Like all surgery, there are associated risks. Physical therapy and realistic expectations are important for successful recovery. The majority of knee replacement surgery patients can be discharged safely within 48 hours. Factors that facilitate a rapid discharge include preparation, pain control, and family and social supports. The joint replacement program will assess and assign your length of stay as follows. The fast track, which is one to two days, routine, which is three days, and extended stay, which has a rehab or convalescent care stage. Recovering from knee replacement surgery is generally more painful than recovering from a hip replacement. Effective pain management is important. Pain can be managed through individualized medication, ice or cryotherapy, and physiotherapy. Over 80% of patients experience a good to excellent outcome following knee replacement surgery. Please remember, however, that your new joint will not function identically to a normal knee. Common complaints following joint replacement surgery include numbness at the front of the knee, feeling of stiffness, the loss of full flexion, feeling or hearing a click, and difficulty kneeling. It is expected that 90% of knees will still function well after 15 or more years. Some potential complications following knee replacement surgery include residual pain, either local or referred, residual limp, stiffness, instability, wear and tear component failure, and pneumonia, heart attack, or stroke. Additional complications may include bleeding and the need for a blood transfusion, infection, blood clots, and related conditions such as deep venous thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, fracture ligament or tendon injury, and damage to muscle, nerve, and blood vessels. The wait time for knee replacement surgery depends on several factors, including the severity of your knee disease, your general medical health, and the amount of operating room time allocated to joint replacement surgery. Current recommendations are for knee replacements to be performed within six months of booking. The current wait time is well beyond that benchmark. You may now change surgeons to have your knee replaced by a surgeon with a shorter wait list. The rebalanced surgeons have agreed to a first available appropriate surgeon triage or FAST 2.0. This allows patients the ability to decide to have their surgery performed sooner by another trained orthopedic surgeon, rather than waiting on a longer wait list. This may result in a significant reduction in wait time. For most patients, the stay for an uncomplicated knee replacement can be accomplished safely within 48 hours. In order to accomplish this, preparation for discharge on day 1 or 2 needs to be completed before admission. The actual discharge date will depend on the individual patient's clinical status and recovery. Unfortunately, due to the scarcity of hospital resources, prolonged stay for convenience or social issues is not possible. If there are concerns, arrange additional private home supports and or private respite care may be an option. Please discuss these with your navigator. Being able to drive safely depends on the leg operated, the use of an automatic or a standard transmission, and your ability to safely navigate your foot from the gas to the brake. Some general guidelines to follow are, you should be off all narcotic medication, a minimum of six weeks if it is your right leg, and your ability to safely stop in an emergency. Please discuss this with your surgeon and or physiotherapist at your post-operative visit. Remember, your artificial knee is artificial. While some patients say their prosthetic joint feels as good as new, most patients say it feels different although much better than their previous worn-out knee. It is difficult to give an absolute number on how long your knee will last. In general terms, if the knee surgery is performed successfully, there's a 90% or greater expectation of your knee joint surviving for more than 15 years. Like any mechanical bearing surface, wear of the artificial knee is related to the quality of the surface and the amount of use, much like tires on your car. There are some controversies as to what are acceptable and unacceptable activities after knee replacement surgery. 
Generally speaking, non-impact activities that avoid extremes of range of motion are recommended. Meanwhile, all high-impact activities of the knee should be avoided. Some activities that are allowed after knee replacement surgery include walking, speed walking and hiking, road cycling, swimming, canoeing, kayaking and sailing, square and ballroom dancing, low impact and water aerobics, bowling, and weight training. With some experience, you may also find yourself comfortable with ice skating and non-contact hockey, cross country and downhill skiing, doubles tennis, horseback riding, rowing, Pilates and gentle yoga, and inline skating. As high impact activities or those that require extreme flexion or rotation of the knee should be avoided, we do not recommend singles tennis, handball or squash, rock climbing, volleyball and basketball, football and soccer, jogging and running, baseball, martial arts, high impact aerobics, and contact hockey.